Hey y'all, Billy and the Homestead Honey, <laughs> back again, and uh, we're covering things that in you know in the past years that we've done this YouTube channel, we never really covered what we grow in the gardens and stuff like that before because we just felt like so many other people were covering it, so we stuck to animal systems. Well, this year it's going to be a lot different, and we're going to go into greater detail about how we go about doing that. Well, today is Potato Day, and I know. From our friends in the south that we just visited, um, I mean, they're way ahead because obviously different growing seasons and stuff like that. Now, be sure to stick around because we're going to give you all the verdict on those Heaven's Harvest seeds that we got the other day where we said we weren't sure what to expect. Well, stick around. We're going to go down there when we do the high tunnel, and we're going to talk about how those things are panning out. So, Homestead Honey, a.k.a. Michelle, yes, what are we growing today? What varieties and... Um, all right, break so it down. Today we've got a few different varieties. In this bed, we're picking, we're uh, planting some fingerling potatoes. It's a uh, Lorette. I've never tried this this variety before, so we're gonna try it today. Well, they sound good. I mean, Lorette it sounds like some. It sounds like we're mispronouncing it, and it's like some fancy French kind of thing. It probably is. <clears throat> the Lorette. <laughs> <laughs> Come with me, and we shall fly to the Casbah. All right, so Michelle, I noticed that unlike the other potatoes, you didn't actually cut them down or anything. Is there a reason for that? Well, these are smaller fingerling potatoes. I just didn't, I just didn't cut them down. I cut the other varieties down, the Yukon Golds and the Kennebex, um, and then let them dry. But I just didn't cut these down. Now, also, you got this awesome green material up in here, and every one of these beds you're putting potatoes. We want to tell everybody what that's all about. It's horseradish. It's a perennial. It's probably it helps with pests for potatoes and some people advise against it because it's highly invasive but for me that's a benefit that's a real good benefit because she eats like a pregnant woman and will eat all she would eat all horseradish if you were to just step back and let her do it horseradish and potatoes <laughs> yes horseradish potatoes at every single meal and here she is as hard as woodpecker lips because she's just you know hard that way ain't that right honey yeah because she eats horseradish all day who knew breakfast of champions what else do we know that'll solve a lot of that is it well if you have life in your soil like bacteria fungi nematodes protozoa if yeah if you have life in your soil which means you can't be applying things that are going to kill it you shouldn't have to worry about a whole lot of pests. And in the past, honestly, we can go. We're going to go ahead and cover this in. And y'all, in the past, honestly, whenever we would have issues, and this is like Masanubo Fukuoka 101. And then in the future, we're going to talk about some other influences in terms of gardening and things of that nature. Is that you don't have a genetic problem, at least from our standpoint. You don't have a problem with the bugs. Remember, we think we think of things in this world in a reductionistic way in the western world and we're learning to see them more and more in a well in more of a pragmatic way but honestly a holistic way where we're saying instead of saying oh we got potato bugs no we have a lack of good soil and right on cue so yeah we don't have a problem we don't have a pro we don't have a pest problem we got a lack of life in the soil problem the proper life isn't that right that's right Word, I think that's what she just said. All right, what are we gonna do next? We gotta dig another trench on the other side of the horseradish. Now you don't have enough potatoes of that type for this whole bed, so what are you what are you gonna do? You gonna fill it in with some other stuff? Yeah, I have some varieties that we um, stored from last year. We saved potato seed from last year that I'm going to try. They weren't stored under proper conditions, so I'm not I don't know how well they're going to do, but I'm going to plant them and I'm just going to see what they do. Here we go, get this. Hey dad, what's the biggest frustrating thing mom does with gardens? Every single year for the almost 30 years we've been married. What? The number really? one problem. years? Yeah, almost. I'm saying we're getting there. But the point being is every, she won't tag anything. I mean, there ain't no telling what's coming up out of the ground half the time. 
And then she just had the audacity to it's say. It's horseradish coming up out of the ground. What you guys don't know is that mom won't tag it, and then she forgets, and then everybody's wondering what's being planted. I'm like, are we going <laughs> to possibly find this out? And, and then, mom just tried to pull the whole I'll remember thing. Because, <laughs> let me explain not. why. Because we planted fingerling potatoes. The third row is potatoes we saved. They're obviously different from fingerling potatoes. And she can't even tell us what variety they are proving <laughs> said point. So here we are. Okay. It's time to move on because <laughs> here we are. So you got a bag of Yukon gold, right? Yes. All right. So and I have same a tag right in the corner. Oh, well, heavens to Murgatroyd. We actually got a, oh, and a tag we can see, not a popsicle <laughs> popsicle stick that's gonna that nobody's gonna remember so okay we're gonna do the same thing all over again three rows right yep okay so uh we'll just get i guess y'all don't necessarily need to watch all that i'll do the rows and i guess you'll come behind me right yep all right All right, Michelle's inside making up a bottle for the, her little spoiled brat down there. And I'm going to commence to planting these Nicolas. Like the name. Anybody want to guess why? So what do we got in this last bed over here that you just did? Uh, Kennebec's in this one. Kennebec's. Do we see a tag anywhere? Yeah, right here. Oh my goodness. I'm buying a lottery ticket. All right, so we're going down. She's going to go feed that little bottle baby of hers, and then we're off to the high tone. Poor little Lammy. Are you starving? Are you starving, little Danny? All right, y'all. These are those uh, Heaven's Harvest seeds we did a while back. So far, 100% on these pickling cucumbers. And we're starting to see the other ones pop right out of the ground. We got this, uh, what is this, leaf lettuce and basil, uh, Genovese basil. And then we got tomatoes and peppers over here they haven't get popped up we there's a couple of them um so we're still waiting on the rest i gotta say so far this is better than some of the highfalutin seed companies you hear about that she's talked about uh, the, the peppers take a little longer too so yeah and it's been a little bit cooler around yeah. here so we're expecting i mean so far i'm thoroughly impressed if you need any of those heaven harvest seeds we'll have the link down below they also have storable food and all that kind of sort of thing this is one of those beds inside the high tunnel that initially last year we talked about it in one of the older videos that we screwed up and put something we were in a rush okay which is what we never want to be in and wound up putting some of that nasty bag soil in here that who had who knows what well we had to remediate that with some of the good stuff that we make and uh we're going to go ahead and broad fork this thing one more time because it's just not wonderful but as this season unfolds we're going to be doing things later on that will un that'll obviously unfold as it happens that is probably going to make all the difference in the world. So uh, yeah, there was there was some native soil in here, like we we left some of the native soil in, and then we added compost. So it's a it's a heavy clay, so it's not going to hurt to broad fork it. But this will probably be the last year we ever broad fork anything else. Am I wrong? Nope. Nope. And we got reasons for that, but we'll talk about that later. I'll go ahead and do that, honey, before somebody calls me a loafer. <laughs> yeah, I got this. <laughs> All right, I'm about done with this. I'm not so sure it was necessary. Michelle's over here. They got, what do we got here? A bed there's, of comfrey along with a bunch yeah, of... Yeah, uh, there's a bunch of clover growing in with the uh, the comfrey. I'm just going to let the clover grow. Um, it looks yeah. like disorder, but it's really not. I mean, this is by design. And by the way, if you need any of that comfrey, this is where it comes from. We got it at the website if you want some. Yeah, okay. So here she is just setting this thing up. And it's too bad he wasn't catching all this drama on camera where she acts all nice and sweet on the camera and then wah, 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 wah. 
<laughs> why was that not just happening? Was that, was that not it? just? Why don't okay. you tell the other half of that story? <laughs> yeah, well, look, the, people are gonna think y'all have marital issues. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> why don't you tell the other half? Well, of that we've been story. married for almost thirty years, so I think we got a few things right. Um, so anyway. Yeah, this is not the best conditions in the world, but like I said, here coming up very soon, we're going to show you how we're going to remediate this stuff in a very powerful way with some new information that we're learning, and uh, it's it's truly game changing. So Michelle's going to drive on here. What potatoes are we putting in here? Uh, we're going to do three different varieties in this bed. We have leftover Yukons, Kennebec, and I also want to test to see if the potato that we stored that we're under less than favorable storage conditions are actually going to grow or if it's just a waste of time to save them. Hey, let me also say that in these times as she's doing this, let me just kind of point out these seed kits are wonderful. I mean, when you find a good one that works, um, but also keep in mind that, you know, your storage crops, especially in these times where we're in a place in America and I dare say the world where there's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of definitely food security, but you're never going to hear that if you're listening to the mainstream prostitutes. So you also want to be thinking about those crops that in a bind, in any kind of bind, you could actually put them away, have them store for a very long time and then pull them out as you need them. Now it's one thing, you know, like I said, a lot of these kits, of course, they're not going to put seed potatoes in a kit like that. So you want to make sure you're handling that also as well. And then your sweet potatoes when the time comes. Those are also things you can put back that store for a very long time. And also they're kind of high, they're, they're dense, especially uh, sweet potatoes, high density nutrition in something like that. And they're pretty doggone easy to grow. So um, keep those things in mind, especially in these times. All right, if you want to see discussions um, coming up real close, in fact, this the end of this weekend, um, Farm Where You Live in Asheville, North Carolina, see a link down for, the, for, for that. Uh, use promo code PERMA for 10% off. Also, anybody that's interested, probably the last butchery class I'm going to be doing this year is going to be at Sow the Land with Sow the Land. Also have a link down for that. That's going to be at the end of April, beginning of May. We got two different classes, two different weekends, and that's basically going to be the end of what y'all see from us in person this year. So, here we go. That's a wrap. What do we got, honey? So, we got three different varieties here, right? Yep. We've got some Yukon Golds, Kennebec, and then just some saved ones that we're testing out. Saved. Wait. Well, these are saved ones that we don't know what they are, right? That's not why we're <laughs> testing them. Yeah. Anyway, y'all. And I, I'm pretty sure I labeled them last year. I just didn't label them in storage. They're potatoes. <laughs> All right, y'all. So there it is in a wrap. Remember, if you need any of those, um, any of those uh, seeds that they have at Heaven's Harvest, we got them down below. Uh, we don't have seed potatoes, but if you need Comfrey, world's best deer repellent bone sauce, we're going to be doing a video on that for all those that are interested. Coming up real soon, and like I said, at the end of this week, Asheville, North Carolina, not far from where we are right now, we're going to be there. Also, the permaculture, not well, almost messed up there. The polyface pimp daddy himself, Joel Salatin, is going to be there. Don't want to miss it just for that reason alone. All right, y'all. I guess that's going to do it for us. Uh, till next time, this is Billy on behalf of the Homestead Honey. Michelle, there she is right there. All right, we'll see y'all next time.